Welcome back, everybody. Is your ISP device causing you to suck at gaming? Well, let's suck no more. Let's take some hardware. Let's build our own router and see if we can't fix this. Stick around. Okay, let's jump right into this. What we're going to use is a software called OpenWRT. This is going to be a router that you're going to create on your own hardware. And speaking of hardware, you'll notice that I'm using uh, some pretty old stuff here. I've got an Intel i5-2400 from 2011, and I've got an Intel board uh, DQ67EP also from 2011. So if you don't have this stuff laying around, you can pick up something like this on eBay or whatever. It's, it's dirt cheap. Okay, and one final thing, uh, we're going to assume that your computer is built and it's ready to rock and roll. Uh, the only other thing you really need is a decent quality NIC, and I'm using uh, one of these Dell uh, dual port NICs, and uh, this is just one example on eBay. Uh, this is like 18 bucks. I'm sure if you dig around, you could probably find something like this uh, even cheaper. But at the end of the day, this is a pretty powerful NIC, and the, uh, you know, 18 bucks for a NIC is not a hardship. So you're going to need this installed in your uh, computer as well. And so one port will be WAN, and one port will be your LAN. Okay, let me just give you a little bit of uh, overview on how I've set this up at my, uh, at my house. So the modem is from our ISP. Um, it is currently in uh, Bridgeport mode, so it is no longer an all-in-one device. It's just a modem now. And with uh, my ISP, I have, two, uh, I, I have two IP addresses that I can use. And so those IP addresses are assigned to the downstream devices. So the way I've set this up is one uh, IP goes to this uh, Asus router that I bought, and that serves uh, basically Wi-Fi for the most part. I do have some hardwired connections going off to a TV, a couple of TVs. And then the other um, external IP that the ISP gives me goes to OpenWRT. And on the open WRT, there's uh, a NIC with two ports, like I just showed you. So one port is the WAN port, and the other port is the LAN port. So uh, after my open WRT, I have a just a gigabit network switch, and then that feeds my PCs. My open WRT is the DHCP server for this subnet and the ASUS router is the DHCP server for this subnet. So effectively what I've done is uh, my kids, my family, they all connect through the internet from the ASUS uh, router, and I have my own um, LAN slash subnet for myself. So this is sort of the topology of how this works, and uh, now we can begin configuring the... Uh, Open WRT to help you, uh, you know, win some more games. So before that, uh, it should be mentioned that you really need to put your ISP device on IP pass-through mode. And simply what this means is your Open WRT router is going to receive an IP directly from your ISP. The routing and NAT and other functions of your ISP device will not be done on that device. It'll be done on your open WRT device. Uh, some um, uh, ISP uh, modems or routers, whatever they call it, uh, they can call it uh, bridge port mode as well. Uh, second to that, you could also call your ISP and more than likely they'll be happy to uh, Put your device in bridge port mode if that's what it needs or uh, you may have the ability to do ip pass through yourself so for me i'm on uh, i'm in canada and i'm on a uh, isp called shaw and the device that comes from shaw 
we can set IP pass through ourselves. And it's it's a couple of clicks and the modem reboots and you're you're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so to download OpenWRT for x86, go to uh, openwrt.org. You're going to click Downloads. And then you want to click your Stable Releases. And then you want to scroll down and find the newest release that is not a release candidate. So here it's 22.03.5. Uh, the next screen, you want to select your target and the target is just the device that you're going to install to. So you'll see uh, in the next screen that we have x86 as an option. So we'll click that. Uh, my uh, Intel board is a 60, and CPU I should say, is 64-bit capable. So we're going to click that. And my board also supports EFI. So we're going to download the combined EFI image. So go ahead and click that, and it'll download and then you can just use uh, 7-zip to extract this to a folder. Okay, so here's our download. It's a GZ, uh, GZ archive. Uh, since I have uh, 7-zip installed, you can just extract here or extract to if you want to keep it in its own folder, which is what I'll do. Don't worry about uh, this some data thing that happens sometimes. Okay, so inside here, here is our disk image. Okay, once you have extracted, uh, use Win32 Disk Imager. Go ahead and uh, pick your disk image. Uh, verify that drive, the device is the drive you want. So my USB is uh, drive F. And then we're going to go ahead and write this. Okay, that's written, so we can exit now. Okay, so you have your hardware built. You've got your, you know, the NICs installed. You've got the, um, you've got the Ethernet cable coming from your ISP device to one port of the NIC, and you've got another um, Ethernet cable going from the other port to a network switch. So what we're going to do now is we're going to boot... Uh, open WRT for the first time. Okay, and that's pretty much it. The rest of the work is going to be done from a browser on your on one of the computers connected to the switch going back to your open WRT. Okay, so by default, the uh, administrative uh, IP address for OpenWRT is 192.168.1.1. And the first time you log in, um, the username is just root and the password is blank. Okay, so there you go. Here's uh, the main status screen of OpenWRT. So the first thing you want to do is uh, change your password. So you can go to administration and just give it some sort of password. And save that. And the password's been successfully changed. So now uh, that message is gone. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we want to do uh, to improve your gaming. So uh, one of it, one of them, and probably the most important, is a thing called buffer bloat. And uh, buffer bloat is a is an induced latency in your network traffic from your machine to a game server. So let's say you're playing Call of Duty, and you uh, suffer buffer bloat essentially what that is is the packets of information leaving your computer um, can can pile up in a buffer and what that actually means for you in the real world is uh, when you 
click to fire, there can be some induced latency that's happening because those packets are built up. And in other words, what's happening is you ultimately lose a firefight because milliseconds count in gaming. So what you want to do is you want, you want to check, do you have buffer bloat? And more than likely you will because most ISP devices are, are garbage for that. So what you can do is go to, uh, let's say this website here, this is just one of them. I've already done a test previously and, uh, and I've, um, tuned it to, to get a, a, a plus buffer bo uh, bloat, uh, grade, but let's just test again with this, uh, blank open WRT config, cause we haven't done anything to it yet. And let's see what we get. So you can currently see here that um, we're looking at, you know, some extra latency that shouldn't actually be there while it's doing this test. And this is for downloads right now. And now it's going to do an upload. Okay, so as you can see, um, it detected that my latency increased under under load. Okay and i've i've gotten a grade of b so we can fix that and uh i'm going to show you how right now okay oh, so to uh install the package that you need to help you reduce buffer bloat go to system software if you don't see anything listed here just click on uh update lists it doesn't take long and it's gonna pull a list of uh, available updates and well, and packages that you can install. And then we're gonna install something called SQM. So under the filter, just type SQM. And we want uh, the Lucy interface for the SQ SQM uh, scripts queue, okay? So just click install. Uh, it's gonna show you some dependencies that need to be installed. And then go ahead and just click install. And it's done. Now under, uh, we'll do a refresh. And then under network, you'll see we have SQM QoS as an option now. It's literally a matter of enabling it. Okay. So uh, we'll enable it and we'll click save and apply. Okay, and then for good measure, I'm going to actually reboot the uh, OpenWRT router. Okay, so it's rebooted. Let's log in. Oops, wrong password. Okay, so now let's go back to that uh, buffer bloat test and let's test again. As you can see right now, we're not showing any extra latency on uh, for buffer bloat. Okay, and there you have it. We got an A-plus rating, and it was literally uh, installing a package and enabling it. So as before, you saw that I was, I was showing, you know, 30-plus milliseconds of latency. Uh, imagine you're in a game, and you're in a firefight, and the enemy has uh you know on his computer he's done this he has no buffer bloat and you've got 30 extra milliseconds more buffer bloat um yes 30 milliseconds is a very short amount of time like 250 milliseconds is a quarter second so yeah but milliseconds matter in online gaming especially first person shooters it really does so if you're the guy that has this configured and enabled and you're up against somebody who doesn't um, and you're on the ball with your trigger finger probably you're gonna win that firefight okay let's move on to uh, how do, how do you get uh, an open NAT type uh, and this will this will work not only for PC gaming but it'll also work for um, you console gamers out there so I'm sure you've seen like maybe you're in modern warfare or whatever and in the lobby and on the bottom of the screen your nat type showing 
um, either strict or moderate or open. Open is what you want. And uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, set up OpenWRT so that your NAT type is open. Okay, so how do you get uh, open NAT type for gaming? Uh, again, this is going to be uh, installing uh, a package. So you're going to go to software. And let's update the list again. Okay. And then you're going to search for UPnP. Oops, that's not how you spell that. UPnP. So unplug, unplug and play. And you're going to um, you're going to install the unplug and play uh, client here. So uh, go ahead and click install on that. This is the dependencies that it needs to install. So we'll do that. Okay, and then we'll refresh and then you'll notice a new tab called services has popped up and so we'll go ahead and configure this so what we're going to do is we're going to enable the service and then we're gonna allow the ports to be opened on demand so these aren't open all the time these these ports will open up uh, as you uh, open a game. So like, let's say uh, Modern Warfare as an example. When OpenWRT is sensing that uh, Call of Duty is looking to, to pass through a specific port, it will open that port and allow that traffic through, which will change your NAT type in-game to open. So uh, you need to know what your computer's IP address is so we can simply just open up a command prompt and you can just type in ip config and just hit enter and this is my uh interface that i know is for my lan and this is my ip address internal ip address 192.168.1.232 so what we're going to do is we're going to edit the allow and we're going to put in 192.168.1.232 and we're on a 24-bit uh, subnet so we're going to put slash 24 and we're going to click save okay so now when openwrt senses that a port from this particular machine which is my gaming machine is wanting to open a port it will open a port now, having said that, there is uh, one more thing that we're going to do, because uh, sometimes just configuring this doesn't actually work. I think it's kind of a little bit of a glitch in uh, in this service. So, oops, I forgot to apply that. So let's go ahead and click Save and Apply. Okay. And I'm going to uh, restart the system once more, just for good measure. Okay, so back on the uh, OpenWRT machine itself, um, <clears throat> this is going to be done command line, but don't worry, it's not that hard. We're going to edit um, a specific file and we're going to make some changes. So... We're going to use the VI editor and we're going to go to the ETC directory, the config directory, and then the UPnP service. Okay. And this is um, sort of the, the config file that's behind that UNP, UPnP service that we just uh, enabled and configured in the GUI. Okay. So you probably remember you typed in, we typed in 192.168.1.232. This is allowing the ports to these, uh, to these high ports. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the slash 24. And so in VI, you can use the arrow keys to move around. If you want to make an edit, you have to hit the insert key on your keyboard. Okay, and now we can delete this. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add another option. 
and we're going to tell it what our external IP is. Um, I'm going to be blocking this out, um, as well as you probably saw it was blocked out on the GUI interface as well, because you don't need to know what my external IP is. So put in your external IP here. And uh, you actually have to have it in quotes. I forgot to do that. There you go. And then what you want to do is after you've clicked insert so that you can um, edit, you're going to hit escape to take you out of uh, edit. And then you're going to go shift colon W. And that's happening down in the very lower right there. Shift colon W is going to write the file. And then shift colon Q is going to quit. And then if you want to see if the change stuck, you can go cat etc config upnp and that just lists what uh what happened and as you can see um the uh the changes are permanent okay so now i'm going to uh reboot the wrt router again from the gui and uh we will fire up say Call of Duty Modern Warfare and you'll notice that the NAT type is now open. Okay, so let's open up Modern Warfare. We're gonna have okay, and there you go. Down here, NAT type, open. Uh, normally I uh, was running NAT type moderate and every once in a while it would say strict. But, uh, yeah, using UPnP in OpenWRT with the correct settings will uh, make sure that your NAT type is open. And that, uh, you know, will help you find matches and, and whatnot inside the game. And this will work for any game. I mean, it's not just, I'm just using mo Modern Warfare because it actually shows this right here. And there you go. Okay, so... Hopefully that wasn't too hard to follow along, and uh, hopefully you have it up and running. And uh, yeah, so you can reduce your buffer bloat and have open NAT type for either your PC or your Xbox or PlayStation or whatever. And uh, I don't know, happy fragging.